Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So today's video, a few different things going on in it. Starting off with, we're going to have to clear out this shed. It is the calving shed, uh, the creep area in the back of it. Uh, dung levels are just starting to get to a point where they're getting pretty high. Um, and the gates kind of catching them when you're trying to open or close them. So that, and along with the fact that it has gotten a little bit squelchy on the foot when you're walking on it. Uh, so yeah we're just going to clear it out uh, all the rain that we've had doesn't help there's space sheeting on the roof of this shed a certain amount of moisture does get through every time it rains and that doesn't happen when you've as much rain as we've had over the last couple of months uh, constant little bit of dampness coming in hasn't helped the straw uh, staying dry we have kept it bedded every second day but even at that it still still needs to be cleaned out so that's what we're going to do put all the calves are now in on the slats uh, and they can still stand in there for the shouldn't take that long, but there is a good bit of dung on it, so yeah. I suppose the best thing to do is to get at it. Oh, just before we get going, we got a new window fitted on the teleporter. Uh, a crack appeared in it, I suppose it's about two, 18 months ago, down low on the window, and eventually it made its way right the whole way up. And you could just see it on the window now. It was just annoying looking out, it, I suppose, more than anything, but uh, yeah, we. Got onto our insurance company. It was covered fully comprehensive. So we got a new window. The guys come and fit it this morning. So be able to see plenty hopefully out the window.
about almost a week later. And uh, as you've seen there in that part of the video, we got the calves cleaned out, bedded. They're very happy with the new bed. They've been bedded a couple of times since that. And uh, yeah, things is great on that front, no issues. Um, what isn't great is the weather isn't great. It still is not letting up with all this rain. Um, we've we got a bit of field work done last week, which I didn't video because the pressure was on and I just couldn't lose time in video on it. Um, I didn't even take the camera with me. So what I got done last week was the Easter weekend, we had a pretty dry weekend in, uh, in the northeast end of the country. We hadn't much rain at all. Um, so good dry in Easter weekend. The bank holiday Monday, Easter Monday, uh, was also reasonably dry. There was a couple of showers, but nothing worth, talk nothing worth talking about. And we were able to get, I got slurrying done on the ciders ground. Some of the ciders ground slurried on that day. Uh, some of it done on the Tuesday. Uh, we stopped slurrying then around dinner time on the Tuesday and we put on the fertilizer spreader and we got the fertilizer out on the rest of our winter crops. Now the ground was tricky, it wasn't perfect, it actually wasn't, I thought it would have been worse to be honest, uh, it's probably better than it was last year, but it really was down to just having those dry, basically dry four days. Uh, with very little rain it just dried out a bit and we were able to get it done so we got seven there was 70 acres left still fertilized we got that done on tuesday which was great bit of rain then on wednesday which helped to wash it in and we got <coughs> the slurry and basically finished on uh, wednesday uh, and uh, more or less wednesday and a little bit of a thursday so yeah and we had some rain then uh, towards the end of last week. Uh, very windy over the weekend, great drying over the weekend, but now it's back absolutely thundering with rain now again. And we're just basically back to square one with the fields. So, no let up. I still have, I still have about eight, eight acres of silage ground to slurry. <coughs> so, hope to get that done at some stage this week. Uh, and I would also like to think that I'll get uh, the silage ground fertilized with the liquid nitrogen so we will see on that front I, there's a good bit of rain forecast for today um, and then there's rain forecast for for Wednesday not as much Wednesday as today tomorrow Tuesday is dry so we're just going to have to see what, what it does uh, but we are we've got a few bits done not like what we'd like to get done but we've got a few bits done so today we're moving the dung, um, basically the dung that we cleaned out of the sheds last week and a few other bits and pieces of dung that's in the yard and we're just taking it over to the field to, to tip it. Uh, this is load number two that I have on at the minute. Um, this part of the field that I'm tipping it in is quite dry so uh, that end of it is okay. Um, but yeah, there, I see water lying here, there wasn't lying here when I was last over here. Uh, about about half an hour or 40 minutes ago uh, it just shows you how much rain that has fell in the last uh, in the last the last 40 minutes or so um, so yeah we'll get this reversed in and get it tipped up and uh, get it emptied Slight little electrical issue in the 3650. 
which uh, wasn't in it before. This wiper is not working. Uh, split wipers on this tractor, one on each of the, the windows on the front. Um, and what happens is, it actually happened on the 2850 one time. See that cable, there's a cable there that comes through the cab, feeds up through the cab and then comes out here and there's a bit of flex on it then that uh, works the wiper in the door. So basically when you open and close the door, the cable will move with the door. But over years and over time, uh, where the cable's bending over, the, the, the wire can actually just crack. So that's all it should be. So we'd have to have a little investigation of that and get that sorted out. Because uh, you do miss the, the wiper not working. and it's just unbelievable how much wet of the ground it's got with every load that it come over. It has actually eased off raining for a few minutes anyway but uh, yeah just just not simple every single load is just getting a little bit water. All right so load number four has arrived and tipped. That's the final one for the minute. The, the rain has just been relentless. Every single load that I come over to drop off, the ground just kept getting a little bit worse and worse all the time. A little bit more water even on the pass and on the road. It's There's been a, just a, a huge amount of rain in the last three hours. Um, so that is really going to screw up any plans uh, for any field work over the coming days. It's going to take a couple of days now to, to take it back a little bit. It's just, it's just another step on what, it, what is just a demoralising period. Um, and not, not, I don't mean just for me, it's for everybody, for all farmers, anybody who's trying to get anything done. I don't think I've ever seen or heard so many farmers at such a low ebb and, you know, just just disillusioned with it all you know whether it's like the weather is one problem you know it's stopping no matter what sector you're in it's stopping you from getting getting your work done whether you're a tillage farm or you know from getting previous crops that are already damaged from all the rain over the winter uh, for getting them fertilized or sprayed uh, to putting in your spring crops uh, and even any that has got some spring crops the rain that has come is going to do harm to them as well. Uh, you know, you have your your cattle farmers, whether you're into your whether you're sucklers or dry stock, uh, dairy, they're all affected. Everybody is affected by it. Not being able to get cattle out. Uh, dairy farmers letting cattle out for a few hours during the day, trying to trying to, trying to get some of the grazing that you know you're saving somebody a feed or your father, or you're you're not using it all up completely. Uh, but you're not leaving the cattle out long enough to, you, you know, you're going to tear the fields. So like, it's just, it's just a juggling match the whole, the whole way, and and no let up with it. There's no sign of it letting up for the next, you know, the next week and a half. To, you know, ten days ahead, they can kind of see what's coming. Um, you know, the photo you get, it's just not as accurate. But they've got a good idea, and they can, they can tell like that it's. This isn't changing in the next ten days, so, um, so yeah. Look, it's just it's just one more thing on top of all the other issues that there is with farming at the minute, where you, all your inputs are, are are too expensive. What you're selling and what you're getting rid of isn't it, it isn't coming in at a high enough price that you're able to turn it, it, it any way profit out of it. Um, <clears throat> and then on the other side of it, then all the the, the rule changes with, with nitrate that has put land prices crazy. Uh, around here, land prices have just went through the roof over the last, really since the 
last three months of last year and all of this year, they've just went through the roof. Uh, 400, 450, 500 an acre. And I, I can't see where you're going to make that out of it. Dairy farmers are probably dr driven the price mostly because they're trying to keep their numbers up. But with the milk price, it has dropped back slightly from what I'm, um, what I'm reading. I can't see how that it's even going to work for them. You know, it, it's already right given this big money for land, but if the milk price isn't there, uh, I don't know, you know, better if they had to just cut back slightly. So it's it's just, it's it's at an awful level. Farming is just at a, a serious level at the minute, and it's, yeah, just getting um, a, a bit disillusioned with it all, to be honest. Uh, I can't see, just can't see where it's going at the minute, and it's not good anyway.